there. For yeah, me. well, that's what it's all about. <laughs> hey there, folks. This is Jonathan Wilson, and, and actually, we're just kind of breaking in new editions of the uh, on the score. And uh, today, I'm uh, oh, we're actually recording. with uh, Tyler Bates, who uh, clearly plays the guitar viol quite a bit. Tyler, thanks for having me over. Well, glad you could drop by. <laughs> And, uh, you know, basically, I just uh, I thought we'd talk some shop here on some things. But uh, just for those who, um, you know, to bring everybody up to speed, uh, the road that got you here a little bit. Uh, the guitar vowel? Well, uh, being uh, in, in the film composing business and how you found the guitar uh -huh. vowel or how you want, stumbled out of the band scene, that kind of thing. Maybe. Stumbled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I did a lot, a of, lot of uh, you know band stuff my whole life, okay. uh, record deals, touring, all that business, and uh, worked with other artists, writing their material, helping them produce it. But uh, when I returned to LA uh, in '93, mm -hmm. uh, I really just on the side just met people and started doing little movies, and uh, eventually my band kind of you know became a thing and my focus uh, away from movies for a bit uh, and then uh, you know after that uh, imploded mm -hmm. <laughs> came back to film scoring and uh, I did a lot of work with um, uh, Zom Ali and Greg Ellis and eventually uh, I met uh, Loga Torkian through Azam and we had one of your first instruments I think the second, That's right. second one you may have made and uh, you know, Azam said, you should really pick one up, uh, especially because I was uh, just about to get into 300. Mm -hmm. and so then uh, you had that that white guitar viol yes. over there. Yes. It's the only available instrument. And I said, all right, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, my uh, dodgy technique uh, worked really well with 300 and kind of formed, you know, I formed a style from that. Well, it seems, though, I, it really was, a, uh, and I'm not just saying this because I'm the guy who created the instrument, but I, when, uh, it, it seemed like a really good fit. It had that sort of ancient sound with sort of a modern edge to it at the same time. And I think it worked, you know, um, and what can I say? I mean, it just, uh, after that, man, you really got uh, pretty prolific with it. And um, let's Royalties for yeah, Jonathan, yes, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yes, and I appreciate uh, have you having been getting out there uh, with it. Um, I think you sort of were the first guy to really, I'm not the first film composer to actually have one, but I believe you're the first guy to take it to the moon and actually land on the moon. Kind of like Neil Armstrong, you know. Everybody remembers Neil Armstrong, you know. Uh, but the second guy and the third guy, you know, it's the, not the first thing that comes to our mind. But um, anyway, uh, wow, so what, what you've been up to lately? Uh, Conan, there was the, the way that I uh, enjoyed seeing very uh, recently. Yeah, by the I, way. Try and, uh, I try and uh, drag the guitar viol along into a bit of it. Uh, there's a movie coming out uh, near Christmas called The Darkest Hour, and there's uh, a lot of weird effects that I use the instrument for in that. Wow. Um, I've actually used it to create different bass drum sounds just with delays and, and you know, doing some editing and, and combining that with. You know, Can you uh, do a couple little easy. small quickies on the fly? Just well, I mean, the, 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 the thing with, it takes a little while yeah, actually to get in the mode, but even just with a delay, you know, if I'm, say for instance, I, if for instance, I do, do something like this, like a, sound though that's that's uh, bass drum impulse but yeah, yeah sometimes i'll just get stuff going with a um a loop and if i have a delay after the loop station then i can really mess and you're really that. uh using uh there's i mean it, obviously it's the instrument but you've got some pretty interesting things on the floor you've uh, got a, a boss uh looper and uh, good old classic pedals too like the phase 90s and things yeah, like I that. Yeah, I throw all this yeah. stuff in there from time to time. Uh, the whammy pedal's really yeah. great too. Uh, it's really really nice if you're playing something in a high yeah. register and you tune it down an octave to create some really interesting harmonics. And then with this instrument again, it's 
that's really cool. But with the Pog, you know, you're able to dial in uh, octaves and detuned octaves above the root note. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, that's just a drone, you know. It's almost like an organ, you know. cheating around on it a bit, you know. <laughs> the other one, you know, I know exactly what kind of noise I'm making with that. But, right. You know, I'm certainly not uh, trying to uh, subjugate any uh, violinist uh, in yeah. use of this instrument. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So we just do our own thing with it, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool just to... And you also, you have an acoustic one you play uh, some, on some other stuff from time to time. Yeah. Is that, um, and you were, you were uh, there was a nice little... Uh, anecdote or part of the story that I think is kind of cool. You had a director re- come in recently and just say, uh, what's that thing do? And well, it's not a director. It's William Friedkin, you know. Did, oh, okay. did The Exorcist and the French Connection movies and a number of things since. But his latest movie, Killer Joe, we were, uh, we were really thinking about where to go with the music. Mm-hmm. And um, we started off with the idea that we were going to have a southwestern-oriented score, okay. at least imbued with that sound and uh we we ended up uh, in a conversation he's sitting in the room here and he saw the acoustic guitar viola not not really knowing what it was Mm -hmm. and what's that do and Mm -hmm. and before i responded he's like is that like a cello i'm like well uh, you know a bastard cousin or something yeah right so he asked if i could pluck a note and i plucked a note and he asked me to then pluck a note and bow a note and from there uh, we ended up with the foundation for his score, so really the majority of the score is, is based off of the acoustic guitar viol, and uh, that was fun, actually. Wow, that's... that's uh, it's totally not cool. his intended use, I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then right. again, I think the way I play this thing is not exactly how you would have imagined it to be used anyway. So. Wow. Well, uh, for um, I get... A lot of uh, emails from a l- ma- you know many aspiring uh, young uh, composers or people who want to get in the field. What do you have to say? Uh, any advice you would put out there, just in terms of tenacity or whatever <laughs> you, you can think of, or don't do it? Or <laughs> no, I mean I think that you know in life you, you never know yeah. how long you're here, so you really need to go after what gets you fired up every day. And and the thing is is the job of scoring movies and video games and television and other visual medium is very, very competitive, very difficult. So you have to want it beyond thinking, wow, that would be a great job. It has to be something that you have to do. You have to pursue it. You can't see yourself doing anything else. Um, And in pursuing that, I also recommend playing live. I think having Mm -hmm. had a lot of live experience, Mm -hmm. that's factored into my film work and um, been a great benefit on a number of levels. You yeah. know, it's like to play work with Rob Zombie, I can relate to Rob on that level because I've at least you know had a lot of experience in front of an audience, and yeah. there's a feeling that you you uh, accomplish at times when you're playing live that you know I like to express through some of my film music. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you just need to write as much music as you can and, and develop your own style. You know, nobody, wow. you know, the world doesn't need another John Williams knockoff. They need, a, you know, John Williams is a master, so why, why aspire to be something less than that? Exactly. <laughs> Do your own thing, right. man. You know. Well, listen, man. Thank you so much for you know having me by, and uh, we finally connected after you know many months of you know emails back and forth of uh, you know it's uh, and I appreciate your time. I know you're really busy, and believe me, I know what that's like too. I'm just struggling to get it all done, but uh, I think it's uh, very important to get some of this uh, cool stuff out there. And um, anyway, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure.